looks like my camera's just a little bit off. I, uh, I don't typically, when we do these live streams, I don't typically do it uh, using my phone. And I am right now. So for that very reason, I, uh, <laughs> I might have additional sound to problems. So let me know what you think of the sound. Uh, my air conditioning is going. Also, the computer has its fan was spinning and so I can't tell from my side though whether or not that's working also an advertisement was playing on my version uh, also there's a delay so I'm, if I'm a little bit slow on catching some of your comments or uh, whatever you just be aware I'll eventually see them uh, eventually but the big reason why I'm going live tonight is because uh, well now you've probably watched Fallout you've actually seen the show you probably watched the whole series uh, some of you probably even watched it all back to back that same night trying to be the first to have all the dirt on on fallout itself and and that's cool uh i did actually try to watch most all of it that night i did get a majority of it watched uh i finished it off the next night and uh and i will say too i was very surprised for those of you that actually watched the first episode live with me um i was very surprised to see the three thousand more than three thousand people uh watched with us and, and I thought that was kind of funny because it's mostly just me sitting there and eating and, and not really saying too much. Although, you know who did say a lot? Oh, shoot. I think it's battery. I think it's battery might have finally, finally worn out. Let's see if he's talking here. Hey, are you, are you there? Oh, there you are. There he is. Yeah, Mr. Handy. That was my favorite part of the whole show was listening to Mr. Handy react to, to some of the different scenes like that one that was one of my favorite statements he says <laughs> right after somebody got somebody got shot and uh he's uh he's making a comment about it. who's gonna clean up all this blood you guys are barbarians things like that but at any rate uh <laughs> so i like that a lot let's see who's who's here hey mike good to talk to you live um yeah i i thought i i think i think i'm i'm happy that I kept him in the end. I actually was looking at reselling him when I first uh, first got him to film our, our part three. I was looking at reselling him just because he was kind of expensive. Uh, but honestly, he's he's grown on me quite a bit, so it's kind of hard to let him go at this point. Uh-oh, there was a little bit of a delay there. Um, but at any rate, so, so the big question is, now that you've seen it all, uh, what you think about it. And I know there's been a lot of reviews out there. There's a lot of people that are going through and saying what they thought about the Fallout series. And and I guess my big piece was I, I wanted to hold off. I wanted to wait until one week later, which is tonight, um, which originally we were going to release our next episode of of the podcast. But the problem is when we filmed, filmed and recorded the podcast, uh, it was before the show came out. And some of the things in it weren't relevant, and I needed to tweak some things. I just felt like the only way I could kind of adjust that was by kind of adding some comments tonight and talking to you and seeing it tonight. But uh, but anyway, so so that's basically uh, that. Um, I got you. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. So this was this was uh, it was eight episodes, right? We went straight through eight episodes, quickly watched them. Now. As far as uh, something I want to preface before I, I comment on the show itself is I do want to say I, I and there's a reason why I'm saying this. I, I have a bit of a history. If you don't know much about me, I have a bit of a history where back in the day, I actually worked as what they call a screen analyst. And then I became a screen a script doctor, a script analyst, script doctor. Um, and, and my role within that was basically I would read people's scripts and then I had to write a treatment for their scripts uh, so that the studios didn't have to read their scripts, basically, is really what it was. And uh, and so I read a lot of scripts, and I knew a lot about screenwriting, and and, uh, and then when I became, uh, when script doctor means you actually do editing of, of scripts, and you get to do punch up and things like that. And, uh, and I'll tell you that there are some rules. There's some things that, that continuously work. No matter how much people think they want to be unique and try to mix it up, uh, certain things continuously will work even in the most atypical scripts and so there's some things I was looking for when I watched this there's some things I looked for from from that perspective as well as somebody that likes fallout and the and all this this merchandise and everything else that we've kind of talked about up until this point 
Um, but the, the thing about it is, there wasn't a lot that we knew beforehand. I, I actually did know a little bit beforehand, but at the same time, we didn't know a ton before this this thing started. And so there's like a lot of comments that were out there, and even uh, during our live, you know, our our, our stream that uh, people would make about about what they thought it was going to be like. Um, and you can't really tell just from the first episode or the, even the second episode, which some people were able to see in advance. So so here's my take. And, uh, and I'm going to kind of put it through in, in different parts and pieces. Uh, the first thing is that I liked about this series is that everybody wasn't perfect. Uh, everybody had serious flaws. And the whole purpose was to show you those flaws and to show you uh, those imperfections. That's the point of it. Um, even the design, the set design, I think I mentioned that set design and the props as far as they go, because I've had a, I've had to respond to a lot of comments. Uh, by the way, we've received thousands of comments and, and, and to that, I just want to say, please stop. No, just kidding. I, I, I can't. There is a lot of comments though that I've had to respond to, but some of them have been about uh, the the look of the Pip Boy, for example, and the fact that it was kind of it's kind of simplified looking and it was silver and and you might notice that their vault suits uh, were really really um, the, all of them uh, were meant to match exactly and had to be a, a certain brilliant blue and a certain color yellow and the corn was a certain color yellow and then there's a certain color green. They were trying to make it look. Uh, utopian and 1950s ish and stuff like that because the whole point was we want to see a shift when she went out into the community and I gotta say the one the common criticism I have along that line is I didn't feel like when she got out into the wasteland that the wasteland was dirty enough uh, I feel like they could have made it grungier dirtier uh, and and played more with some of that they also had used a lot of hue that kind of brought out too much color um, I, I think they could have done more in that direction. So there wasn't enough of a contrast for me in relation to that, but I get the idea behind it. The whole point is that when Lucy, when we get to know Lucy and we get to know the people in the vault, is that they all are meant to be, to a certain extent, ignorant. Um, and that they're meant to have a bit of, I mean, naturally, uh, this isn't too typical from past faults that we've seen in the game either. Uh, they're also meant to to not, uh, they're also be, it's meant to be overly optimistic is the point to it. And so, of course, you know, that's where we had to put Lucy throughout this whole situation is she has to be overly optimistic. She has to have hope that, that we need to then kind of douse to a certain extent. We need her to, to appear to be strong and straightforward, but then, uh, then, then she'll, she's not, or have her perceive that there's certain things that she can do and then show that she can't. Um, and that was true with every single character. Everyone that they introduced that's a main character, we we learn things about them. All of them have to come to um, acknowledge by the second, by, you know, in the second act that things aren't going well and and that uh, that their plans aren't working and that they have to kind of learn something and adapt so that by the you know, the third act, there's some level of growth and we actually have, you know, kind of a new direction that we're going at that point, which which for this series happens in the very last episode. But um, but yeah, so, I mean, that was the thing that some criticisms that I heard out there were, well, you know, this is going to be kind of a woke thing and stuff because of the, the main character. I don't I can't picture them having done kind of a similar storyline. Without having it be female, and, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, because every time we've seen the scenario, it was a female, um, ever in the past. Any storyline that you can remember and think of, uh, because we need this to be an Alice in Wonderland-ish kind of scenario, or, or you know, uh, Wendy and Peter Pan kind of scenario, one where they have these perceptions and they're having a hard time growing up and by the end we force them to grow up and it was always you know a female partially for the reason that they're more likely to be optimistic or to play that kind of role of oh everybody's doing great um and they just played off a little bit better and and not to sound bad but uh also can play off some of that hopeful ignorance uh, a little bit better and so you know that's that's necessary and at the same time you also have to have a weak thing that then becomes strong 
So, you know, that's that's the piece that I think of it. Um, I, I don't think I I don't think it would have been as interesting uh, with the guy. It would have had to been a totally different storyline. Uh, then then you'd be seeking more of a spaghetti western kind of situation. Although there were some of those vibes that they did try to make happen uh, with the ghoul. Um, but uh, at the same time, I think that that was that they, they tried to use it for that purpose. And then we do have a separate a separate thing that's going on. It is like a spaghetti western. Uh, in the spaghetti spaghetti westerns, you always have to have that that cowboyish or the ninja guy that is that is responsible for taking care of something that is more vulnerable. And they at the same time they don't want to. Um, that's what they try to do even with the Mandalorian. So so we got kind of two things that we're trying to use that that work. They typically work. Uh, you got to play them right, and there was a good balance of the two. And we did go back and forth between them, um, you know. So even with the, with the brother of Hood of Steel, the main character there, throughout the whole thing, you have to you're going back and forth on the inside of this is not a good guy, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and we don't know how not good he is, um, or if we're going to grow to like him, or if he's going to grow out of some of this, and maybe he'll. Be a little bit of a better person or why where that came from um that was that was pretty well played as well um because it does it does keep you uh wanting to 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 follow his character um it's a tough line to play because sometimes you know if you do it too much then the audience wants to see them punished um or they want there to be a bad outcome and so, you know, in this particular case, I mean, yeah, he was he was not not a good guy. Uh, by the way, there are comments uh, I guess I have going on. I meant to put this on a box like I did last time. Do I have a box over here? Obviously, I do. Hang on a sec here. So, ah, all right, not sponsored by Fan Home this time, but at the same time, let me put this underneath here. One of my new boxes that came today. We'll raise this up just enough where I can see the comments without looking down. Uh, so, um, hi, hi, cardboard master. Oh, I just wrote you a comment earlier. Um, let's see here. And, uh, Michael Wastelander, uh, my first live stream on this channel. Hello. Well, thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Have you watched? Uh, I guess this is the point where I also want to know more from all y'all, uh, who's already watched the whole series. And, uh, and also... I want to put out the the warning. I might be doing a little bit of spoilers, so <laughs> if I haven't already done that a little bit, uh, I apologize. But uh, same time, can I have some Nuka Cola? I'm thirsty. I've got some Nuka Cola behind me. I, I actually uh, read something earlier. That bottle is is a dangerous bottle. I see that they're selling it again. If you do get it, don't put liquid in it like I did, or put it in there. Wait until it goes flat, then put it on the top. Uh, because if you've seen my uh, second Pip Boy video, you probably saw where we reenacted the thing exploded, sprayed Coke all over everything that was behind me, and so and ruined half of my props. But uh, at the same time, uh, yeah. So that's okay if you have to go. Um, so yeah, where was I? Oh yeah, as far as uh, as far as our characters go, uh, the same thing with the father. I mean, you knew that we had to follow at the same time they had to use a typical arc that's that's just Fallout. I mean, right? More so Fallout 4. The Fallout 4 endings, right? Where where we find out, yeah, the kid I've been looking for this whole time, he's now old enough to be my dad and uh, and he's not a great guy and, you know, things like that. Um, in this particular case, we have the, the father who is, is not... A great guy, um, which which brings us to another piece is uh, oh actually yeah let me come back to that in a second as far as uh, other people who who was your favorite characters because because I I do have I do have some interest in what characters you have followed the most I know some people made comments about thinking that the brother was also they made all the guys too dumb inside of the vault well no they everyone in the vault was equally ignorant um with the exception of the people that came from the previous vault what well, yeah from the previous vault um some of them seemed to know something right but at the same time her brother 
and her cousin are becoming more and more aware that something is going down. Of course, her brother, that also seems, it was a very classic type of uh, fallout ending also for him. Um, I'm guessing he did get in to the pod and uh, and is going to be waiting uh, for someone to open up that door. And that'll be something maybe we catch down in season two. Um, but uh, let's see here. God bless the Enclave. Yeah. They didn't get a lot as far as they go. Um, there's a lot of suspicions, including from the meeting, that supposedly when she was speaking to the group that were above the lights, that that's who she was speaking to, right? Uh, Vault for Overseer. Okay. Cyclops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was funny. That was That's also a trick. How do you make something serious and also have some humorous stuff and not have it take away from the reality of the whole thing. Um, which is a weird thing to say. I mean, here we're watching this thing that is definitely fantasy. Definitely everything in it, uh, while it has some roots in, in a lot of things from our real world at the same time. I mean, this whole thing is nothing more than a fantasy. And, there, and it's full of stuff like giant robots and things like that that you would think would make this obviously not a problem for me to, to have some humor and do some things that seem unreal. Um, but you do have to be careful. And I thought, I thought they did it all right with, with her going and visiting that vault, uh, and, and getting to know all the uh, research people. I think the, the best part about that was when they were going to let her go and they had all of the supplies, which by the way, if you looked closely, those are the same supplies that they had in 76 before you left the vault, uh, a lot of them. And, uh, and then, and then he comes in and destroys everything and hurts them. And they're still nice enough to be like, okay, here you go. Uh, so again, kind of indicating that people in the vaults, wherever you go, are kind of, are kind of ignorant, even when they come from the outside and they've been exposed to things, they kind of have this utopian idea and why it may or may not work. But at any rate, uh, Mike liked the blonde and the overseer four, yeah, and Lucy, yeah. They they were all good. I like those too. Uh, let's see, pretty please, pretty please what? Oh, can you get me a Pip Boy three thousand? Um, like like this one right here, or like the new one? Um, this one, which way? This one right here. Um, you can still get these actually right now on on eBay, but I think. Um, I think we're going to see some, uh, if you're a big Spirit Halloween person, you're going to see some re-releases of some Spirit Halloween props. Uh, so I'm pretty, I would say hold on and wait for those. I like the Spirit Halloween prop for the 3000 because it's big enough to fit a lot of stuff inside of if you're wanting to make it do a bunch of things. But any rate, and on the flip side, if you want to get a really cool working prop, which by the way, yes, I, now I'm allowed to tell you, uh, I know it's been already released. Uh, before I know during the live stream, I had just barely heard Chris told me I couldn't tell anyone, but uh, yeah, now the Pip Boy uh, 3000 Mark V, as we named it, uh, is going to have a working FM radio, a bouncing Geiger counter needle, things like that. So, so yeah, I don't know about the flashlight, uh, that is something I, I, I need to ask about, and I'll be touching that prop in exactly 20 days, I think it is. So, any rate, um, yeah, so there you go. Get the other one you want, give me, give me. Um, any rate, awesome. Uh, Connor uh, commented that they liked 90% of it. Uh, 10%, there's 10% that you didn't like. Okay. Um, what was the 10% you didn't like? I am curious on that part. Um, I was, I was starting to say, you know, the, the thing, um, the, the one thing that I know everyone's kind of nervous about is the ending. So if you haven't seen the show all the way through, I don't know that I'm really releasing anything that's a big spoiler, but at the very end, we do learn that season two will have something to do with Ball at New Vegas. It's because that's where they wind up at the very end of season uh, one. Um, and... And I thought it looked pretty good. It looked it looked a little bit too much like it does in the game, though, which is kind of a small, you know, uh, set. But maybe maybe they'll punch it up a little bit when they do the actual series. Um, but at the same time, ten uh, percent is happening. Oh yeah, the NCR part. You know, yeah, 
I, I I know a lot of people also didn't like how they made some of them act or, or seem. Um, but maybe they'll be better in, in Vegas, right? Because <laughs> they have more control over there. I don't know. Uh, at any rate, so, so yeah, I mean, that's... That's that's something that's that's a concern I know with a lot of people because part of the whole thing with Fall in New Vegas was there's some things that are meant to be kind of unresolved. There's some things that we don't want to get closure on, um, you know. And and also, I mean, what what exactly are they going to do there? And, and is that going to mess up things canon wise? On the flip side, I mean, both between the Pip Boys and some of the other stuff, it's it's kind of blurrier as far as where and when this really did happen. We know it's supposed to be at near the end of Fallout 4, but but there's some things that kind of are mixing in with, with other parts of other games and locations. And so um, so is it kind of its own thing? Uh, is it a side universe almost? Which is kind of what we saw with uh, with some of the early, early Fallout games uh, when they were started, when Bethesda started releasing theirs while the other ones were still being released. Um, I mean, I don't know. You know what? How do you accept things, and can you be open to it, and just and, and accept it separately, or do you feel like it should be exactly the same or not? So far, I think they've done a great job, and I've been pretty pleased at how it looks. Uh, so, I mean, I'll I'll say that I I feel pretty good about the show. I liked it. Um, I also liked who the uh, radio announcer tenant turned out to be. I liked that part too. Uh, big fan. Um, but at any rate. Let's see here. Let's see what else other people are thinking. Um, the 10% is what happened to the NCR and the reveal. Okay, I already read that part. As far as in the end credits of the final episode, New Vegas uh, looked destroyed. Did it? I didn't look that close. So you think that it's that this is post New Vegas then? Is that what you're thinking? I don't know. I mean, that would also kind of give away some... Things or have to decide on one of the endings, right? I don't know. Um, I do know some things about plans in relation to season two. Oh, some things I can tell you uh, that we, we kind of knew about season one that ended out uh, not showing up. You never saw the Pip Boy get opened up. You never saw the the hollow tapes get pulled out or put in, um, which is good. Uh, the biggest criticism, I, it's funny because a lot of people wrote uh, criticisms on, on our video, the, the short at least, where Chris mentioned that it would be, it, it wasn't that it's impossible, it's just the cost of making it open up and, and also not have something that would break. Uh, really easily because every time that something gets broken, then of course that's who they call. Like they would call the one company and be like, "Ah, my thing broke." Well, you know, uh, so trying to make it where it would be something strong enough, but also be able to do things and then also fit everything was kind of a trick. Um, and like he mentioned for the video, it's for the actual show. They actually had to create a separate prop because they couldn't make one do both things. Um, but they did have their pit boys always turned on. Uh, also, their pit boys actually did a lot of things. Like the crew would play with them when they weren't uh, filming. They actually would put things on there for the crew to mess around with. And the pit boy that's coming out will, will emulate a lot of those things. And uh, but and at the same time, people were really critical, and they're like, "Well, why can't you make it do that?" Well, on the flip side, there's also the criticism of, "Well, why did they design it that way, where it would open up the screen?" Because remember, the screens on these, even though I mean, yeah, naturally. Where where exactly is that tube fitting behind it? Um, you know, uh, the CRT isn't really going to fit, but are you going to make it even less so because somehow you're sticking a tape going right behind it? Um, so, you know, it, it, as far as the fallout technology that, that caused some problems, but where will they end up putting it or will they, or will they still keep that design? That's, that's a big question in my mind. But at any rate, uh, catching up. Whoops, sorry. As per the Bethesda, the show is canon to the game, a universe. Yep. It's not like the Halo where the show is its own continuity. Yeah, I get you. Uh, you can really see where they, this is Mike now, uh, you can really see where they chose to spend the money. They spent the money on practical, um, on the practical fault on the Red Rocket 
and the power armor. I loved the Rod, Red Rocket scene, though. Um, and if you looked at the sign, even the sign was the exact same as it is in the game. Um, that was that was pretty cool. And so, at any rate, um, Kisker, Kisker Vinrath uh, said, like, watch episode one again. They got the times the bomb dropped wrong. Oh, did they? Hmm. Although, now, but remember, that's that, that's the tricky part about this show, too. So, again, for those of you who haven't watched it, I'm about to give a big spoiler now. The big spoiler is the Shyamalan, Night, M. Night Shyamalan twist is that supposedly the things that she's hearing about this whole time and the things that, they, that she's thinking from the history that she learned is actually different because, basically, there was a second... There's a second, you know, after everything got rebuilt, there's a second bomb that drops. Um, and we find out that that was actually, been, you know, involving their own people uh, to to be able to to wipe out the people on the service, essentially. Um, and so so which one, which date are we talking about is the question. But anyway, I don't know. Uh, that's the part that kind of got me is, and I'm still trying to figure out, is like <laughs> the whole thing of, has it really was it really within that 200 years from the ones that we're referencing that we know about from the fallout uh the standard fallout stuff or is this a, a second thing or what is it uh related to um that was more recent uh let's see here and connor hi connor missed connor out at new vegas uh the show is in 2296 the game was set in 2281 right yep so yeah what happened in between there I don't know. Uh, let's see here. You can really see where they chose. It. Okay. And then also Kisker Ben Rath, from my perspective, the Fallout show is good series, but it's not a near, nearly as lore accurate or detail consistent as they advertised it. I gotcha. Um, and also like watch episode one. Okay. Watch episode one again. They got the times the time the bottom dropped wrong. Um, Connor. Also is making comments about uh, that's why the 76 Pip Boy is so well designed as the port for the holotape is completely separate. I like that. Um, I actually, my favorite one is definitely the 2000, even though it was a lot easier to do things and it's a lot easier to build your own 3000 version. Uh, the 2000 just had all these really cool little details and things. And in case you didn't know, I mean, Chris actually had a, had a big role in it having all the tape area on in in 76 because they were going to get rid of it they were going to scrap it um because originally they wanted to have it open in a different way and he's like that wouldn't work like it's not never going to work and they're like well we'll just take it out and, he's, and so he redesigned it and they actually did it based on the design of the toy so if you have the toy actually the the, the video game version was designed off of that in the end so um so that's kind of a cool thing to know uh let's see here Bombs dropped at 9.42 a.m. Yes, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, there was no way for the birthday party to exist at the time uh, in any time zone. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. So, yeah. So, for the 200-year-old for the uh, ghoul, uh, apparently, you know, he couldn't have made it then. And so that... <laughs> uh, let's see here. Also, the watchers are inaccurate. I would assume they forgot to adjust during retakes. The TV, however, shows a clock right before the blast, 10.47 a.m. in California. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's going to be the Pacific time. And then Connor says, uh, Kiski is easy to have a birthday party at a bit before 10 a.m., but on the West Coast, uh, where did it be... Just before seven. No, oh, I got you. That's true. Yeah. So Mike's making the comment about the fact that the sac. Uh, I think that the sacrifice some detail or for money have proper time and consistency. It's a shame that uh, Chrysalis and the fleas. Oh yeah, I was really hoping that they would have those in there too. But then again, we didn't really have them in the older Fallout uh, games. Um, you know, but at the same time, uh, also that's a big thing that Chris was involved in. Um, the flea, particularly, that's his baby, and uh, so that's why we're still working on doing something 
Or I'm, I'm actually working on something right now for him that's secret. Although I know he watched the last live stream. Hopefully he's not watching this time. I've got, I'm, I'm making a, uh, well, I'll just, I'll show it to you some other time. <laughs> but I am making something pretty big and pretty cool in relation to the flea um, that I plan to send over to, to Chris and the lawn company. Um, but at any rate, um, yep, the discussion is still going on back and forth about the birthday party. That is like the last thing I even noticed. And <laughs> it's the biggest controversy at the moment. Uh, but at any rate, yeah, so... So I don't know. I, I, I thought it was, I mean, it comes down to, there's always going to be a slight, you know, there's always going to be a slight difference. Um, there's always going to be small things. I mean, we've been seeing this from game to game uh, happen and, and uh, some inconsistencies or characters, things like that. Uh, so what, what do you accept and what do you, what do you allow for? Um, I, I was my my criticism was that all the pit boys were the same pit boy, and uh, when we're talking when we're dealing with multiple vaults and we're talking about you know we have people that have been outside for quite a bit of time. The only time we saw one of the other pit boys was hanging in the shop, uh, which was that one. Uh, you know it was one of uh, one of the actual one company uh, toys that somebody got and and hung up in there, um, which was cool. I don't think I saw I don't think I saw one of the other. 3000s. I didn't see any other versions of the 2000s, the early 2000s, um, or anything like that. So, um, definitely didn't see the very first Pip Boy. Of course, that one doesn't like nobody could actually carry it. You have to sit on a table, stick your arms. <laughs> but uh, I would like to build one of those. If anyone is interested in seeing that, boy, I'd love to. I'd love to bring one of those uh, to to one of the cons. Um, oh, I lost some space here. Jumping from that, uh, in the shop, yeah, the, yep, like I said, yep, there was a 76 prop in, inside of the shop. Um, but yeah, I didn't see anyone like wearing one or using any. And then when they were kind of when they went back in time, they still had the same 3000 Mark V. Um, I don't know, and I did say, you know, when after so you know, we we helped to name that, uh, without me being able to see the show. And know all the details about it. It was just based on the fact that when we know it comes out and what it looks like. And the fact that it had to be newer. Because it also looks a lot more modern. Um, and smaller and everything else. It's like a new phone. Like naturally you're not going to. You're not. You're going to assume that that one's newer. Um, but at the same time. Um, you know the number of the vault. When did it open? When did it close? Um, now it kind of makes sense, or we could make it make sense, because obviously it was kind of opened and closed uh, after they defrosted a few people and kind of rejuvenated that uh, that vault. So maybe they, they would do an update or something. Um, but I don't know. It's just, it is it is interesting. And uh, so, yeah, I was curious about that. Um, it says, uh, let's see here. Uh Kisker Van Rath says, I'm almost upset by the listening device. Not that it exists. I'll give the lore break of tech that's small for fun, practical purpose, but the fact that we won't have Bluetooth earbuds uh, to buy. Um, oh, I gotcha. Like the one that he had? I thought about that too. Um, it didn't look comfortable. <laughs> but yeah, the part that popped out and he stuck in. Um, I was also going to write to Chris because there's a orange. I noticed that one of the knobs on the Pip Boy in the end, it has an orange end to it. Um, so, uh, at any rate, but I mean, those are all things that I can still tweak and stuff. I, it's like Chris said, it's kind of hard because, you know, they, they did, they committed, they overcommitted. They always do that. That's what's so awesome about the one company. They'll be like, okay, we're going to go into this, we're going to commit that we're going to build something. For two hundred dollars, and then they did something that they knew they could build for two hundred dollars, and then they take you know all the criticisms and the, and the things people want out there. And they're like, sure, why not? We'll go ahead and throw in an FM radio. We'll go ahead and throw in and you know more lights. We'll go ahead and throw in yeah, <laughs> a needle that bounces and stuff. I mean, you know, things like that. It's like, well, okay, yeah. He, I, I think they will often sacrifice for their for their fan base. Um, you know, that's something that makes them different. Than, than other companies. So I, I uh, definitely I definitely do um, 
you know, I'm a huge fan of theirs. Um, and, and, and Chris and his family and stuff. I mean, this is a small company. It feels like it must be big. It's not. It's a small company uh, that does kind of big things. And, and they really do do it for the fans. Um, same thing is true with their tricorder, which I'll also be seeing. I mean, they really, they do things. Um, that's a true love letter. If you're, if you are getting the tricorder that they're making, man, um, I mean, it, it will, it goes above and beyond what any fan could want. And then they've asked for input from the fans on each and every little thing. Um, and that one, yeah, I mean that's gonna. It costs more than the Pip Boy, but it will. It also does a lot of things that um, that it doesn't. So anyway, but that's that. That I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing about the earbud thing is is would it be used <laughs> to listen on other people? Or are you talking to just listen to uh, to music on it? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there were those things. Do you remember when they had, there was this commercial and this product that was out for a while that was supposed to be, for people like, that are old and they can't hear, a cheap product that they would buy instead of the strength in their ear to help them hear. But then the additional things they did inside of the, uh, <laughs> so the commercial was that they listen in on people talking about, about how they're dressed from another table. <laughs> they're like, boy, she sure is pretty. It's like, yeah, that's what you would hear through that. Uh, at any rate. Uh, but at any rate, let's see here. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Mike's got a new topic here. It says, can we talk about the giant gaping ch chasm in the gate room uh, that makes no sense that should be a cement floor, not a big giant pit to the inside of the vault where everything is exposed, and why? That's a good question. Does anyone have any input on that? <laughs> I mean, honestly, uh, I, I, wonder, I wonder if that's also part of the, if that's also part of what happened before, um, because you know that they already had been, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the reasoning for that is either. Um, it was a little bit weird. Um, I I also thought <laughs> that yeah, the whole thing where also in the other vault where they were where they capture people by having them walk in and then fall straight down um, and like break their legs or whatever. <laughs> it's like this is just like an open area. Uh, that's accessible to the outside. Um, it's not exactly like a vault door. You'd think that raiders would have already come in and broken into that place a couple few times, but um, especially since it looks like a building that's, that's in pretty good condition, too. Um, but I don't know. Um, oh, here we go. The answer is the rule of cool. Giant pits in the floor, or greater than the floor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some people are a little bit more forgiving uh, about that huge ga gaping chasm, um, but at the same time, I get you. It was unnecessary to use uh, CGI to show the elevator. Yeah, it. Yeah, although it was kind of cool at the same time. <laughs> I don't know. Some things do look just kind of cool. I I agree. Some things you do them just because. I think they also needed to explain the time, like they needed time to be able to get away. Uh, in a lot of the other vaults, it would have been a short distance. Uh, you would have just, you know, ran up the, the sets of stairs, um, or there was a really short, uh, the elevator that you would think of, and some, some of the other ones were to get up and out of the vault. Um, so, I mean, for the most part, it was just like, oh yeah, just walk out and there it is. Um, so how would we make it so they couldn't get to them as easily and they can kind of shut them out? I think that's more of a storyline design than it was a necessity. Um, but let's see. Oh, sorry. I'm behind on you. The elevator is like 20 plus floors deeper than the traditional vaults. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Also special vaults by the vault tech officials. So I give them the design. Oh, there you go. Uh, vault four slide also seemed heavily guarded. Um, yeah, <laughs> dropped, knocked out, drugged. Um, maybe they got caught. I mean, we didn't see, but you know, when he threw, when he, he, 
when he threw the uh, the when he threw this back down, um, it just went straight to the floor. So I mean, obviously they must have fallen all the way too. I don't know, uh, but I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but wouldn't you think though, Raiders wise, wouldn't they be interested in that building? I mean, you saw all the stuff that was in there. There's plenty of things, um, and and also some of the all the mechanical stuff and the computers and everything else. I mean, Brotherhood of Steel wise, you think? I don't know. I just I just it was curious. I was thinking, oh, well, this looks like a this would look like a place you'd want to head. It was really clean, well taken care of. I just sleep there in that lobby area or where all the the, like take up one of those cubicles, put your stuff in. I don't know, hang up some pictures. Um, but at any rate, yeah. <laughs> so so at any rate, yeah. I I I I thought it was interesting. I wish we could actually. The benefit of the game is when you see things, you can actually try to go and explore them, right? Um, and and so we don't have that that benefit. Although Mike. Has has built a Minecraft version of at least uh, Vault 33 um, that you can go check out uh, the, the, at least on his stream um, or, or or over there. And yes, there we go. Um, oh, I thought you were reacting to what I was just saying. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so uh, but at the same time, yeah, go to his, to his uh, Twitch channel and is it Twitch? Is that where it is? I think it is in Twitch. Um, Go over there and and check out the. I think you're making some changes too. I remember even when I was watching it live and they showed some additional sections of Alt 33. I was like, oh, Mike's gonna have to <laughs> fix some tweaks now. Uh, but at any rate, uh, yeah. Oh, Vault 13. Hold on, four with the DLCs. That's very cool. I I, you know, I like. The reason why I was initially interested in or how I even really got into Fallout uh, was by four because I, I like build I liked building games. I like world building games. Um, and so like I think before I started fall uh, Fallout four, I was doing roller coaster tycoon and and getting mods and stuff to build stuff in there. I like that kind of stuff. And so, when I saw some of the mods be able to endlessly build in four, uh, that was my that was my thing. So um, that's what drew drew me in. Um, and then you know, yeah, it's just yeah, it was just cool. It's I I like things that brought you into something. And then when I first got uh, the opportunity to to start using the Oculus, the very first set of Oculus uh, before they were open for public consumption. Um, so this is this is the developer kit that I had. Um, that was one of the first things that I did. I played Fallout uh, with it because uh, there was a program you could use that then you'd open up your games and it would kind of simulate or create uh, that 3D virtual uh, world in, in a kit like that. And and I just remember thinking it was so cool to be able to enter into that into that world. But anyway. Um, I'm missing out on all sorts of things. Uh, but why did the lights go out? Lights went out and secondary power kicked on. Oh, when he pulled it out, right? Is that what you're talking about? Um, or is are you talking about... Yeah. Are you talking about in 33 when... No, you're talking about the... Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of wondered that too. I mean, so they must have a secondary power source, but it doesn't last very long is what she said. But uh, at any rate, yeah, secondary power source. There you go. But but she said she said she said it would it would run out like it would run out and then they'd have to leave or or you know they'd be they basically die in there. So that's why he had to take it back. Um, at any rate, yeah, the stim packs. How many of you were curious how they would even use those? Um, being able to see them inside the show and also. Um, the, how they would try and get uh, replacements of different things was also kind of interesting to me. Um, but uh, <laughs> I just ran out of breath. <laughs> I think the, I think they had like normal. Uh, so so the conversation going on in there is is like about so okay so he they pull this 
you know, suppose, supposedly the lights go back on, right? Secondary power source. I don't think it was, I don't think that it was using uh, any type of fusion or anything like that. I think it was the, you know, kind of like in some of the areas of uh, some of the games or some of the, even some of the equipment that you get inside some of the games, like it doesn't work uh, very long or you don't have as much strength or power because it's using an another type of power source. I also thought it was interesting that even with, in in vault 33 to watch the television they were using the bicycle pedals to to get the tv working and stuff which was completely unnecessary it was an interesting detail uh i also liked the detail about the wedding dress that was pretty good i liked i liked some of these little things that kind of added to it stuff that we haven't really seen or heard before i liked all that little stuff that was uh that was in there um the games. Jab it in. Yep. Uh, in episode one, did you notice that the Nuka Colas inside the machine had no bottle caps? I didn't notice that. So they had no bottle caps on the top. It's because they had to be taken off to go spend for money, right? They didn't. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, I didn't think that they were using the bicycles for power. I think it was just. Oh, just, just so they could just work out? Maybe it is. You might be right. Kind of like astronauts. Like they have to they have to do a minimal amount of something all the time because they don't get the same outdoor luxuries. I don't know. Possibly. I mean, they were out, they were doing farming and stuff like that. How, what did you think of that too, uh, by the way? As far as the kind of like holodeck thing that they do uh, with projectors projecting the uh, scenes of and they said actually nebraska which is i think it was wasn't it wasn't in nebraska that they were projecting uh which is where i am actually so uh, they left out the tornadoes like we had the other day but still yeah <laughs> that that was interesting that's kind of a new thing um yeah how are you gonna how are you gonna do that wall projection stuff there mike instead of yours um That scene with dad bike had something sus in the first frames. Uh, looked like silver adult toy. Oh, no. I'm sure it wasn't. <laughs> uh, Nebraska Sky. It wasn't Nebraska Sky. That's what I thought. Yeah. Somebody somebody mentioned it in one of the scenes. Um, so, yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. I th that was kind of a good idea. I, th I had no problem with that. It didn't seem against... Yeah, they they definitely put it where it was realistic. Um, although, if you grew up like me in an era where we actually did use projectors back in the day, like in school, it seemed like whenever we, I, when I was a boy, we would watch TV or we'd watch movies on the screen uh, when they wanted to teach us stuff. And uh, the the biggest thing that you always bet on was or hoped for was that the film was going to melt because it did every single time. Like, it was just a question of how long does it go before it melts or or, or multiple times of it melting and then them having to tape it back together and, and run it through again and stuff like that. But uh, so so at the same time, like, I, I don't think it could be filmed that they're running through it or I don't know. So are we talking another little piece of technology that we could probably use somewhere else inside of it? Was it a holotape situation where it's playing it kind of like their, you know, their players used? Um, something like that. I don't know. Uh, they are also using the older hollow tapes that I saw uh, in there, like the ones that we used to see in the in the other games, and they were kind of large. So we haven't seen a little a little hollow tape yet. Uh, but at the same time, um, oh, you you will have a blank projector wall. Okay, so Mike's got that worked out. Um, Yeah, it seems to be just the sky as they, as they close the wall, first floor. So it seems to be multiple displays instead. Well, when they started going off, because uh, they, you know, they started shutting down when they were fighting and everything else, it looked like it was multiple uh, pointing guys. So I was just suspecting it must be because you could see the screen. Some stayed on, some went off. Um, so I think they must have, you know, several to make that happen. That's more realistic, too. And to cover that screen, that size of that wall and everything. But any rate, any questions that you have for me um, or other comments uh, related to anything that we're doing currently uh, on the channel, I think I am going to uh, 
I'm going to be re-releasing a couple things, but I will admit, I haven't had a lot of time, a lot of free time, because I've been, uh, I'm, I am determined to have the Fallout New Vegas uh, movie come out next next week. Pretty determined on it. Um, the downside is, uh, if, it, if I get really down to the wire, it might come out without any kind of trailer or anything like that to, to let people know that it's coming out. Um, I do like being able to communicate with people when we do those uh, releases, the premieres. That's always nice, but um, sometimes it's just not possible in order to just make sure it kind of gets out there. Um, and then, you know, we've, I've got some, I've got multiple things just here on the desk, actually, that I'm working on related to Fallout or related to other other things. Does anyone know what that is? Um, that's something I'm going to be working on. Uh, let's see here. I have other stuff around here. Oh, this is Fallout related. I already mentioned it. If you watched the live stream for the actual show when I did that first episode, um, this is what my costumes, one of the costumes are going to be that I want to try and take to New Vegas, uh, which I will need to ship beforehand. And so, at any rate, that's, that's that plan. So be watching for that. I will also make a video on that. Um, and and hope to run into people. Is anyone I know Connor? I hope Connor is. Uh, it was on here. Um, I, I hope that there's other people that are watching that are planning on going to that event uh, and again in November of this year and uh, Good Springs, Nevada. Uh, be really fun to see you there or to interact. So if you are planning on going, make sure that you let me know. Um, yeah. Uh, the, um, oh, wait. Why did they paint over the blood in Vault 33 instead of cleaning it? That's a good question. Because <laughs> blood just doesn't wash off like that. <laughs> I don't know. They're iron walls, maybe. I don't know. So, it's the, you know, I'm, it's the problem with, uh, you guys know that, right? You get blood on iron, it's better to leave it on than to, than to try and corrosively get it off because it also has iron in it. At any rate, it's a weird, it's a weird little piece of factoid uh, for you. But at any rate, also the reason why the moon, the moon's turning red is <laughs> because of iron. Uh, at any rate, weird, weird little factoids. I could be a Snapple bottle for you. There you go. Um, but at any rate, oh, do you have the Pip Boy yet? Are you asking about the Pip Boy three thousand Mark V, the one for the show? Is that the question? Um, I think it's funny that that first video was so controversial. People were like, ah, oh, you're trying to fool us with that with that photo. And yet the whole time I, I was sitting there saying, I just saw this this morning. I put in an order for one. I I can't wait till I get mine. And, and the number of people were like, well, why don't you touch it? Pick it up. <laughs> it's not even made yet. It didn't even look like that at that point in time. Uh, in real life, uh, I, I just was trying to come up with a dynamic way of reviewing something rather than... I hate these reviews when people try to do something that's new and they're just like showing you photos that I could find online and I can't see anything about what it would look like in in the real world or, or how big it is and stuff. Um, and I was kind of wrong about the size. I did the size kind of based on this. I actually had this sitting on the table. In fact, you see it actually sitting on the table at one point in time in that video. And then I kind of sized it accordingly. And this is actually much bigger than the other will be. Uh, one of the big concerns that I've had a lot of comments on is, is it going to be big enough for my arm? Or is it going to be too big? Um, as as Chris said, it's going to have a bunch of foam in it. So it's actually going to be able to support your arm. Uh, most sizes, I should say. And so um, when you stick your arm in there, it'll it'll you know have some give and it should you know make some room. And if it's too big, too big, you can always put something else in there. I had to do that. For somebody that was wearing this, I had to put a shirt inside of it so that it fit on him. Uh, oh, that was for, for Timmy inside the, the Pip-Boy video. Um, that's how we got it to fit on his arm at that point in time. But at any rate, uh, thanks, Jude. I appreciate that. Um, that was the question. Did I answer the, the question then? I will be seeing it, though. Uh, so literally, I'm going this upcoming month to test it. Um, I've got the emails and everything else telling me where to be and... And Chris and I are planning on where to stay, and and uh, so yeah, and I know that it's going to be that whole day. Basically, will be dedicated to that and the tricorder. So um, 
So if you guys are interested in those things and you want to see them, those kind of first views you're going to get outside of the one that they did on IGN, uh, this will be an even newer version and uh, closest to what you're going to get in the end than uh, anything else that you've seen out there. So that'll be probably the first review will be on Tested, uh, which is uh, with Adam Savage and Norm Chan. Um, at any rate, uh, yeah. So And I'll be able to touch it and hold it at that point in time and... And I'll also be touching, oh, I, th I think I mentioned this, right? That there, we're getting the prop from Amazon that was actually used on the screen to show that one with it. So I'll also get a handle of that thing. Uh, so I'm kind of interested in that uh, and hope to get a little video of that. Um, but at any rate, um, trying to find some cheaper passport phones is what uh, Kisker writes. Um, I, I, I mean, you know... <sighs> I, I sent some links to people lately. Um, there's plenty of them. Just make sure you're typing in broken or you're looking for broken. And when you see broken, you read the description. And if it says that what they're calling broken is that it's stuck in a Wi-Fi, set up Wi-Fi, that's exactly what you want. That's the one you want. That's a brand new phone. It means it's been reset. And because it was reset and the servers no longer exist, they can't. They didn't know how to set it up. And if you watch then our video on how to do that, which is the, uh, the which one is it? Stage three, stage four that I did. That was kind of the last one that I did, I think, um, of those stages. Uh, then um, check that out. I am planning on releasing, not until June though, the next episode of how the stages of how to put together your own Pip-Boy 2000 uh, using the BlackBerry. Um, and the reason for that is because I was just, I was fighting like crazy. I, I don't love the idea of having people, it's one thing if it's me, <laughs> and I'm willing to bite the bullet and, and ruin my, the external pieces to my Pip-Boy. Um, so with a little bit of Chris's help, I'm hoping to give you a file that you can be able to print out instead that will make it work instead of actually physically modifying it. So... That's my current plan or what I'm trying to aim for. Um, and so, and that'll also speed up the whole process a lot. It'll make it a lot easier. So the next thing would be to just paint it versus me showing you how to warp it, which I had to do using a heat gun. If you're going to jump ahead, that's the way I did it. Uh, just be real careful. You can heat up that plastic pretty easily and, and move it and make it fit right. Um, but I am going to try and aim to give you an actual file to print instead that will only be that piece or that one outer piece. And then also for the back plate, I'll try and give you something similar too, which will also allow for the part to stick out because it's another part you have to manipulate and cut and um, and where you can also mess things up. So I don't want you to get stuck in that situation with your nice Pip-Boy. The other thing that I had a problem with is I also realized that my Pip-Boy, which is the part of the original kit, is different. Uh, you know, those pieces are different with the, with the newer model, uh, the special um, edition pieces. So that threw me off. Um, <laughs> outside of having to take the screen out and take it apart and figure out how to do everything on that. Um, yeah, there's a few pieces. So, so you know, I'm having to give directions that will be able to work regardless of which Pip-Boy 2000 you purchased. And so that's the reason why I haven't done more with that. I hope that I answered your question there. Uh, but at any rate... Ah, uh, yeah. I caught on with sellers. Um, I bought one. So I've, I've been giving people links pretty consistently for $35 ones. Uh, and I actually chose and purchased one two days ago on eBay for that price. So I guarantee you, you're going to find a BlackBerry that's that price. I keep finding them easily. Um, so don't, don't get discouraged. Also... There's ways in eBay for you to watch for items at certain prices or a certain type of thing. That's another way to find things sometimes. That's how I purchased a lot of things that would have cost me a lot otherwise. And a lot of times you'll get somebody... This is how I got my radio also. Uh, I, I another, another thing to keep in mind is just because it says a certain amount, um, a lot of these people don't know that they're going to get it. And they... and I don't know. It doesn't It doesn't hurt you to put in an offer. So whenever you see that there's an offer button, put in an offer. Put in a low ball offer too, because then that means that when they counter you, you can now come back and add an offer that might be somewhere in between that's closer to where you would, what you would play anyways. 
and they'll accept it. Um, so I got a radio for my Pip Boy 2000 for the less than that was technically on the shelf, $35. Because I, e I emailed the guy and said, uh, you know, I, I think it was $300 originally was what he was trying to get out of it. And I just emailed him and said, hey, you know, just so you're aware, this was only 35 bucks off the shelf. Like, is that what you're selling? Is this? And he emailed me back and said, I'll take $35. And then he changed the listing uh, and uh, sent me the link and then I purchased it. So uh, I don't know how in line with eBay that is. But at the same time, I've done this several times. Now. Same thing with uh, I have another thing, a big thing over here that I was trying to get the Star Wars related thing. And just put it off forever. And I just got tired of seeing people overselling them for overpriced. I, I felt overpriced. And extended my offer and they took it. So, I mean, yeah, there's several ways to, to get in there and get what you need. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, good. Yeah, if you have a 3D printer, you could you can do a lot of things with 3D printer. And yeah, you could print, print a pit boy that's, you know, built from the ground up. Um I keep referencing, in fact, he was in my last live stream, uh, Zap Wizard. Zap Wizard has a great model and and um, an amazing UI and everything else that he's built. Um, and also with a real working Geiger counter, um, you know, be in contact with him, talk to him about it. Uh, there's also somebody else that took, uh, took my video, got inspired a little bit by one of my videos, and then also looked at Zap Wizard stuff and then decided that he wanted to still, he was determined to try and make it work. The Pip Boy 2000 work, uh, you know, with a with a Raspberry. I don't think I don't know if he. We, I can't I can't remember if we used Raspberry Pi in the end or not, but basically did uh, cram in a lot of stuff and it, but still ran into the problem that I mentioned, which is well, where how do you get it all in there? He had a lot of stuff that had to be on the outside initially, and then eventually um, has tweaked it. He sent me some updated photos and videos, which I'm going to be sharing in our next podcast next week. Um, that this shows that it, now he's got most everything inside. And, and then he added its things to it that make it look like it's been in the wasteland. Like he's got, he replaced uh, one of the knobs. So now it has a Nuka-Cola cap uh, for the knob, um, stuff like that. Like really, really cool. Um, and, and it has some really, uh, you know, clever ideas. So I keep on shaking the camera because it's attached to the table. So I apologize. Uh, I'm not having an earthquake here or anything like that. Uh, but at the same time, anyway, any rate, so that was that. <laughs> uh, aluminum replica would be cool. I've had a lot of people write me and say that they're, they have ways to do it and that they want to do it. Um, if you do, great. I, I will say this, uh, cause I've had a lot of people ask me about the weight of this new one too. Um, with all the stuff that goes into it and the, you know, the metal front, but then with mine, mine, when everything's in it right now, I've got, it's, it doesn't have the, uh, the, um, Blackberry in it. But at the same time, when everything's in it, that, that thing is as heavy as you would expect it to be in the game. I mean, it's heavy. And it's plastic exterior. If it had all those components inside of it, plus it was metal, it would be unbearable. <laughs> so, I don't know. I mean, it comes down to what it is that you want to get out of the thing. Um, you know, sometimes uh, I, I recently made something that was miniature, and I intended to do it with with, you know, iron and I ended up doing it with something else and then made it look like iron and it still had a feel somehow of metal because of the paint job that I used um, certain paints I've learned I've learned over a lot of practice certain paints that you can use as bases and then other paints you can put on top that will make it feel 100% cold and things like real metal and it will look and shine like real metal um, so anyway that's my little rant about metal <laughs> Uh, the Blueberry Passport. <laughs> uh, let's see here. What model of Blackberry off the top of your head? Uh, as far as the Blackberry that goes inside of the Pip-Boy 2000, that's the Blackberry Passport is the one that you want to type in. There are two versions, and I'll tell you that one of them you will probably see go for more money, but it's also less desirable for me, um, because it also has a bezel that's, that's, um, that's metallic. Um, and it was the silver version. So that's like the name of it, the silver version. And uh, it was kind of like the higher end one, supposedly it had some extra things tied to it. Um, it's supposed to have a little bit faster processor too, I think. And uh, so 
I don't know, if you get that one and you find it for a good price, I'd say you still get it. But at the same time, I, I wouldn't use a screen from the metal one or from the silver one because it would stand out more. You'd see that silver edge on it and behind it, you'd have to cover it up with something. So, um, but I don't know why I brought that all up. But you do know too, the Blackberry was actually, before they shut down, um, which is, which <laughs> I actually had, I had, I had an interview lined up uh, for the for the third Pip Boy video, I had an interview set up for me to interview the CEO of BlackBerry about about the phones, and I thought it'd be funny for him to make a comment about not disassembling your phone, and that was kind of my plan. They made me submit everything I was going to ask him. I had to do all all sorts of hoops to get through it, and then the night before or two days before. They said, the guy that was my, the person that was my contact said, uh, I can't, you know, I can't make it now and stuff, or we can't, we'll have to postpone or, or, you know, we're not gonna be able to do this. And I said, well, is there a way I can interview somebody else? And he said, well, I can't wrangle. That was the exact words he used, wrangle. I can't wrangle anyone else uh, right at the moment. And then the next day it came out in the news that they weren't gonna make BlackBerry phones anymore. So I think that might be the, the reason why it got canceled. But uh, you know that they were, their consideration when they were considering moving forward with phones because of its popularity, they were looking at making a newer version of the uh, Passport. And there's other companies in China that have looked at making a newer version of the Passport. Um, so, but I mean, the main reason why I like the Passport was just that it's, it's form factor is the biggest thing, that screen, square screen. And it's weird to see apps playing in that square screen, uh, like the uh, my favorite is the uh, Fallout. Uh, the uh, <laughs> what's the what's the what's the game? Uh, yeah. Uh, any rate, the the Fallout game on on uh, on Android. Um, I was able to load that on there, and it's in a square format and it's just it's just cool to see it just naturally fits the the screen so um any rate yeah um it's the mr handy next to you yes it is yep this is mr handy you can barely see it but you can still see him down there huh yep that's him just like i showed i kind of showed him earlier but just for fun here i'll make him work again and there it goes It's a great prop. This thing is expensive, though. It was a lot of money. I felt super guilty about buying them, but I was determined I want to use them. So that third Pip Boy video, he looked great. The last thing Raiders need is an intelligent leader. Yeah. It would make him a proper force to be reckoned with. That's for sure. <laughs> look at all the and details too. Thank you very much. Look at the look at the eye. You can see that the aperture it opens and closes. It's just so cool. Um, definitely, I mean, it, I, it's, it was definitely worth that much money. It's just, at the same time, um, yeah, I, uh, it's f fully articulatable and things like that. At the same time, um, I'm only now coming to grips to, okay, you know, it's been long enough. <laughs> Maybe I'll just keep them. I'm sure I could resell them for quite a bit. When I bought them, it was right at the end of when they were selling them on Bethesda store. And I initially accidentally make the mistake of purchasing them on um, the UK store. And luckily before they shipped them, I realized what had happened and I contacted them and they let me cancel the order and I switched over to the US. But um, but yeah, Mr. Handy, he is, he is great. He had a great role in watching the uh, Fallout series last week and he does, did a pretty good job on the hand, on the, on the Handy, <laughs> on this side. <laughs> yeah, Fallout Shelter, thank you. Yep, that is what it's called, yes, uh, perfect. Um, who makes the Mr. Handy or who makes Fallout Shelter? <laughs> the Mr. Handy, um, what's great about Mr. Handy? Here, if you give me one more second, I will reach over here and grab his box. Oh, here it is. His box is actually part of what was great about him, too. So, because the way they packaged it, the descriptions on the outside are, are like real world. So it says things like, bring Mr. Handy to your home. Mr. Handy expertly uh, performs many duties such as accounting, cleaning, comforting, cooking, child care, entertaining, elderly care. It goes on and on. It says, there is no task too big for Mr. Handy to handle. 
Mr. Handy cannot lift objects heavier than 40 pounds. Consult your physician before following Mr. Handy's medical advice. Mr. Handy may not be able to perform any of the duties mentioned. Uh, after all, this is a collectible articulating figure. And then it says, warning, Mr. Handy's, Handy's just jet is a fire hazard, not a barbecue grill. Used with caution. And it has stuff like that all the way around uh, the outside. So, kind of kind of fun. Hard not to. I like I like packages that have good good things to them. I know a lot of people have been asking me about the uh, Pit Boys package. I don't know. I mean, the main reason why we came up with the name is to have something to say on the package, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, Pit Boy three thousand Mark V. I mean, you have to have something that says on the outside that separates it out. Uh, you spent over a thousand dollars on a proton pack. That's pretty good, though. That's that's a lot of money. I hope it's a good one. I hope it's a full size one too, <laughs> for that price. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you do. You have two of the flea cards. So which flea cards do you have? Because those those also are worth some serious dough these days. Um, mine is the class. My my favorite one, anyways, is the blue one, uh, which is the one that I'm kind of trying to replicate right now in a larger form. But uh, any rate. They, they go, oh yeah, and here's the back. Opens up. This was made by the wand company as well. I haven't put new batteries in, but normally this part back here will also light up when you open this up. And then it has, see the little cell in there? Isn't that cool? But at any rate, yeah. Great little, great little thing. Has working, working tires that turn and things like that. Uh, really cool instructions. Um, something that Chris is pretty proud of. It also came with a, a button, collectible button, because the whole point is, now if you think, oh, well, that's a miniature, like this is supposed to be a miniature collectible. No, everything the wand company produces is supposed to be one-to-one -one scale. So how's that one-to-one -one scale, you might be asking. Well, Chris's plan was that it was supposed to be like the thing that the salesperson gets for so many years of sales, and the pin is also to commemorate that. So this supposedly what someone with a chrysalis uh, corporation would get. Um, and uh, and so, so yeah, so you have the different cars and then same thing with, uh, you have the picker up and everything else. Those are supposed to be things that would be put onto a desk or a display for the people in the game that uh, that were using them. And I think they were also hoping that they'd be ministers in the game. The, the Pip-Boy was also yeah, featured, that, that exact one in the case was featured as a kit in Fallout 76. But anyway, um, uh, let's see here. Oh, you have the Slocum Joes. I, I like that one. That's a good one. I kind of want that too. Um, and Sugar Bomb and the Red Rocket. Wow. Okay. Well, that's those are great ones. Um, and, and, you know, but that also was something that he had a pitch, I guess. Mike has those. Really? You have all three of those? Um, yeah, those are worth some serious dough. Uh, so, at any rate, just so you know, I know that somebody actually offered him not too long ago, I uh, like you know, a thousand bucks or something for one of them, and he uh, told them that if they wanted to donate that to a charity, he would give it to them, and they just had to prove that they, what charity they submitted it to. Um, but at any rate, uh, yeah, it's one to the one to the so choice that they sold in the world. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see here. Is it, <laughs> uh, is it, is it Paul Productions wrote, um, I'll leave off part of this, but is Indiana Jones stacking tires in the back? Um, nope, that's the, uh, that's the idol's stand that he's behind. Um, I can't remember who makes that. I actually bought all the pieces to my Indiana Jones figure and the stand because I didn't find one that had everything I liked. Uh, Hot Toys. Indiana Jones is kind of cool because his eyes look around, which is kind of creepy. Like, you take off his hat, and you can move his eyes into position where you want them. But at the same time, the face sculpt wasn't very good. Everyone complained about it. Um, and then Sideshow had a pretty good one, but uh, I think it has the Sideshow body. I can't remember. Uh, but the body's funky. I don't know. So I basically bought different things. The, the best part of every figure that was out there, put them all together, and then the stand, I think, was also Sideshow. But anyway, so, and then I also have a head right now that's up there that he's uh, holding, which is made of actual 
metal. So anyway, there you go. <laughs> I'm about to do a big Indiana Jones uh, set of things. I just got my full outfit. I was thinking about wearing part of that to uh, test it because uh, I know that's what um, I know that's what Adam's into. Um, I will also share this because nobody's going to know that's that, that's over there. But I'm planning on taking. Uh, I've made one twelfth action figures of Adam and and Norm, and uh, and then they have some of their favorite things with them. So Adams has he's wearing his 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 hat, his Indiana Jones hat. He has on his favorite jacket, which is the space uh, jacket, and then it comes with his book and then his hammer, and then Norm's will has uh, the um, has a resin printer, and and then he's wearing a uh, Oculus. So, anyway, so that uh, should be pretty fun. I'm gonna, I'm kind of excited about that. I think it'll be funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see here. Let's see. <laughs> well, let's see here. Uh, I don't want to miss anybody's stuff too much. Hey there. So I watched a lot of your videos. Uh, this is from Yankee Botan Botanist. Um, hey there. So I watched a lot of your videos and the interview with Chris from the Wand Company about the new Pip Boy. You think it's worth the two hundred dollars? Trying to decide. I will say it's worth it's it's worth way more than two hundred dollars. Like everything else with a the wand company, I'm kind of frustrated because I want uh, also related to the to their Star Trek stuff. I want to get a hold of one of the tricorders, um, and they the, uh, you know like Chris told me they kind of used every bit that they could. So they've got one tricorder that or not tricorder uh, one phaser that. Um, that he has behind glass over there, the wand company. Um, all the rest of them sold. If you go online, go on to eBay, go on anywhere online and try and find one that you can purchase. And there are people selling them for thousands and thousands of dollars, like more than a car. Um, same thing has happened. I mean, the, I think things that we've shown today, things that I didn't, I didn't buy that. For example, uh, the flea, I, did, I got that for a really good price. And now if you go online, that thing is selling for, you know, a lot of money. Um, it's crazy how much some of the stuff is going for. So, I mean, it's it's a good investment. If, if you're trying to justify it cost-wise, then on the flip side, like, everything they put out is, like you said, they, they do things that are are at the highest level that they can. They, they can. And uh, so, um, you know, I have... I've had all these comments asking me for the last five years that I have been doing Pip Boy stuff. I've been asked, you know, can can I buy that? Can I? Because I don't know how to make that. Uh, as far as making a Pip Boy that has a Geiger counter that bounces and a radio and a and a screen with an interface that works and actually all the controls work like they do and you see them, this is going to be that. It's going to be exactly, it's going to be, it's technically, it's better than the prop that they used in the movie, in the, in the TV series. Um, and you're getting it for 200 bucks, uh, which is only a little bit more than what the plastic one that you put together yourself was. I think that's a good deal. Um, so I think it's funny when I see people commenting and they're like, well, why can't it do this and that? Uh, and they'll mention, especially the ones that will say, well, I know that an iPhone can do this, so why can't you make it do that? Well, sure we could. Not for that price. I mean, not you know, not unless you want to pay for an iPhone. Um, so I don't know. It's it's kind of funny. I, I guess so. Yes, I think it's definitely worth it, and I think it'll be it'll be pretty cool. Uh, any rate, so that is that. Um, well, good. Uh, just Johnny also zero five uh, got one recently, and and yeah, the, they'll be coming up in November. It sounds like a ways out, but like we talked about, honestly, I mean, they didn't even get involved uh, or Bethesda didn't reach out to them or, or Amazon until, I mean, the show was pretty much made and, and things like that. I mean, it, it, it wasn't that long ago. They're moving really fast, actually, in this production of making this thing. And the changes they made in a short amount of time, I mean, since the time of our interview, which was a little under a month ago, they've already made multiple changes and made it where it can do multiple things that we, they weren't talking about back, you know, then. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, the only place you can get any of the one company diecast cards, one company diecast cards is eBay or Macari, and you're going to pay a king's ransom, I bet. Um, 
if you have disposable income for these sorts of things, uh, Kisker says, uh, the die cast is a must have if you're a fan. They sadly don't have disposable income. I understand that. They do have a lot of payment programs though. And they have, I I, I don't know. I, I get where people probably even be frustrated at this point because now, you know, uh, Bethesda, I think it's gear store where they've now, if you've left the Pip-Boy in your cart long enough that you're going to the, you get an, a 20% offer for a 20% discount. And people are like, well, what the heck? At the same time, um, it's in the order that you ordered it. So if you were one of the first people to order it, you're still first in line. I mean, keep that in mind. Uh, and if that's worth the 20% or not, or if you want to start over and, and try and get the 20%, I mean, you can. Uh, you know, you've got time. So I don't know. There's there's a lot of things. If if your concern is the money, you've got time. Uh, you don't have to purchase this right away. I don't know the exact cutoff. I do know. I mean, they're basically making this to the pre-orders. So I don't know that it'll keep selling afterwards unless it's really doing great and they are able to produce that many. But I mean, on the flip side, they're trying to make this to the exact amount. So um, you will be able to continue to order it uh, for a while. So uh, make your decisions or think about it. Uh, let's see here. Been busy this week. I just finished Fallout series today. So excited for season two. Says, is it Slifer Jam? Slifer Jam? Um, any rate, Mike says, yeah, oh, Ari Richards, Mike, didn't I? Um, also, Kisker says, I have plans for the working Geiger counter in Pip Boy. My Pip Boy will end up costing me nearly $900 in the end, though. Uh, and that's the wrong pricing. It could be well over a thousand. Wow. Okay. Um, you know, honestly, I did. I, I mean, if you watched the third video, you saw I did. I did figure out, and actually, I do have a module. The Geiger counter module works like a real Geiger counter. The problem is, I mean, the, I want something I can take and I can show, or I can show it on video, and I know it's gonna do something when I show it to people. Not where I'm like, okay, walk over here. <laughs> Let me hold it up to something, or where I'm carrying around, you know, high amounts of radiation in my pocket. I, I just don't have an interest in that. Um, it, it, and even in then, when I was exposing it to radiation, it was like click, 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 <laughs> click, like not really anything where it was like jumping a lot. But it, it's pretty simple. Um, the best way to do that Geiger counter and do your own is the cheapest way is uh go on um the uh, gold mine gold mine um which i actually have a link for now think about it if you go to that third video it has um it has a link to go to the website and basically you type in what you want and then just watch it watch it like crazy and they discount stuff every day and so if you watch something you'll find that that thing will get discounted not in a little bit i mean like tons and then they go back i don't know how what their business model is but like those geiger counters i got several of them you saw and those things are like three hundred dollars a hundred dollars two hundred dollars and and then i'm buying them for like ten dollars thirty dollars twenty dollars um because i'm just waiting for the day where it rolls over uh, so i bought two one night and then i was like and, and i got them for cheap and i went back the next day thinking i should get more and then i could resell them you know or something and when I went back the next day, it was way back up to its price, which was, you know, like five times as much. Um, this is crazy. But I like that place. And it's also a place, good place to get um, those panel meters, the, the uh, side panel meters. And then, uh, and that's what I used. So that it went the right direction. And so that was cheap. And some of them even have lights built into them. And then, uh, and then, you know, you want to make sure that it's for that under, um, Three milliwatts, or I can't remember now. What was it that I was looking for gain wise? But at any rate, um, and and I was, I'm sorry, sorry, three volts. Sorry, yeah, I don't want it that power. Uh, it's three volts. It was under three volts, and then I also had it connected to um, the where the light is, which is which is under which is three volts uh, for the Geiger counter, and that normally just flashes and that made that needle bounce each time that it clicked as well and it would go higher the more it clicked and it was perfect it worked perfectly worked great 
as far as like if when I try to pseudo make it do it. But again, yeah, once when I got it in there and I, I don't know, start exposing it to stuff, it's just, you know, you kind of need something that's bigger, you need a bigger tube, and then it depends on where you are. And so if you're in Chernobyl, um, you're probably going to, you're probably going to get some activity or parts of Japan, but not, uh, not so much, um, you know, it, it, at your local cosplay con. Um, so I don't know. So it's kind of, it's kind of up to you what you want to do. Mine, I, I like mine more because when I go, when I take it also to test it, I can literally say, look, I push this button and the needle starts going and it's bouncing. It just looks cool. Uh, I like it more. <laughs> but some people, I, I know Jet, Zap Wizard was able to do where he could make it do both. It could it, you could do a emulation for him, and then you could also switch it over to the actual Geiger counter um, in his little tiny area because he he made one that was this big, right? That big, which is not easy. Um, so at the same time, my my little way of doing it would still work for that because you just cut off the needle a little bit farther down, but. Uh, but yeah, he fit everything he needed inside of there, and yeah, he, that's kind of his gig. I reached out to him a couple times for asking him some questions about how he does things. Uh, Mike mentioned the Spirit Halloween ver release of a uh, Fallout stuff. I, I mean, how could they not? It would be really stupid if they missed that opportunity this year. Um, I, I really think they are because I watch their site all the time. And I noticed that suddenly they cleaned out and moved a bunch of stuff. So I'm wondering. I also know there's a bunch of Ghostbusters stuff that they're reviving. So uh, plus they're trying to really push their full scale um, uh, Pro Temp pack. So at any rate. So yeah. I think there's a lot of good things coming out this year. But with Spirit Halloween they kind of clear things out. Once when it's not popular anymore and they just stop selling it. So they haven't had some good stuff for a little while. But uh, at any rate. Um... Let's see here. Yankee uh, Botanist wrote, uh, which Geiger counter models are you buying? And I have a Victorian counter set from the old civil defense program from the Cold War. Really cool. That does sound really cool. Um, I, I'm getting the little itty bitty ones. I have four different models that I purchased. My favorite one, I'm trying to think if I have them over here or not. Um, I have them all in packages because I was looking at actually reselling a few of them. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I just don't have any reason to keep making Geiger counter stuff. I have thought about making... I don't know. I just... Yeah. I have so much stuff in here I need to get rid of. And I am... So, I mean, if you're interested in getting a hold of some things that are mine, they will be... I, I will make sure people know that they are for sale or, or things like that. I gave away a bunch of stuff. I gave away huge pieces of the set that we built which we built an actual set uh, for that third Pip-Boy video. Um, and uh, surprisingly, we, the only I only had one or two people that asked for, for the things or said, yeah, I'll take that. Um, and uh, one of them is, is a great viewer that he lives in Australia. And so I had to mail the magazine, the magazine that's shown on the table, uh, I mailed to him that I had made. And then, but nobody took on any of the big stuff. And so all that, I felt bad about it, but I needed to get it out of here. And I didn't see reason to repurpose it. I just, we threw it in the trash. Some stuff I feel bad about because I'm like, oh, maybe we could have used it again. But, you know, it was, it, these are big things that we that we made. And it just wasn't realistic to, to keep holding on to. So, at any rate. Uh, we also know from the show, Kisker uh, Ben Rath wrote, you also know from the show that the Geiger counter is in the edge near the hand as they point there. Oh, there's something I got to tell you about that. In the show, the show Geiger counter. Did you wonder at all? And this is also the answer to if you do get this pip boy and you're like, why is it that it shows it on the screen? Why is it showing it on the screen as well as when, when you clearly have one of these little pip boy uh, Geiger counters that's on it, right? Probably about the same size as this one. Why? Why do they need it on the screen? And the answer is because. On film, the cameras couldn't pick it up as well. And for most of the angles, I mean, like when you go back and you watch it too, you'll see it's mostly like they're getting a shot from behind her and can easily see that screen. And it's huge. They made everything. There's also why you'll notice that a lot of the animations and a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that's on the screen is kind of bigger and simplified is because they needed it 
on that smaller screen. Oh no, there goes my. Uh, it's a smaller screen than this, right? And it's a smaller screen than and actually even the Pip-Boy 2000. So if you need a size comparison and you know how big that screen is, it's smaller than that. And it needed to be able to stand out. And so in order to do that, they just kind of scaled, you know, scaled everything up and made them bigger. So there's this giant Geiger counter, uh, green Geiger counter thing that's on the screen. And so she's she checks that. So it's like, well, why are you looking at that when there's a little Geiger counter on there? That's the reason why is because it just didn't work as well on camera. Um, but at any rate, something that you won't find anywhere else out there that I, I think... Uh, I know that because I've talked to the designers. Um, but anyway, any rate, uh, there's a Raspberry Pi Zero Geiger counter now, oh, totaling under $100. I believe that. Um, there was a, there was actually one that was already made. Uh, well, like the one that Zap Wizard made. That was pretty small, too. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, and, and it doesn't take a lot of power either to make that work. Um, but at any rate, uh, 9 volt battery is what most of these need. And so just so you're aware, a lot of the smaller Geiger counter uh, things that you can buy out there are 9 volts. Um, let's see here. And also, it's also not lore breaking. And a developer could easily work on upgrading the Pip-Boy OS to show things like the radiation on the screen. Especially as this is the furthest into the future lore has yeah that's true uh peter townsend said i thought it was i thought it was great and i've already pre-ordered my pit boy awesome well good deal it's it's i so i mean i enjoyed this series i i liked it i i i thought it was very enjoyable um it was it was good it's not uh also i guess i was going to talk about this earlier anyone that was really interested probably tuned out by now as far as about the show itself, or if they're trying to decide whether or not they should watch it or watch it with their family and stuff. Uh, no, it's not a family show. It's not. It's made by people that make shows that are clearly not family shows. I mean, this is this is going to have some things in it. It covers kind of all the bases as far as that goes. Uh, it can be, it's not as gory as it could have been. That was for sure. I, I didn't think it was. Did you? I mean, definitely the game is more gory than that was. But at the same time, I mean, yeah, you had a lot of pretty heavy categories covered. So, yep, not not for kids. I get that there's kids who are playing Fallout. I just wouldn't recommend it for this. <laughs> Unless they have mods, they probably won't be seeing some of the things that were in the show. Uh, but at the same time, um, yeah, so that's that's something there. Um, and uh, And as far as... I mean, as far as storyline and things like that, some things you also just have to go into it and just turn off your head. Um, but on the flip side, I felt I felt like I was watching a, a Fallout thing. I mean, it, it definitely fit in. It did, and I think part of what helped too is the fact that we were in California. Um, it may sound strange to say, but I think if it would have been in one of the locations we've already heavily been in which is where we get into dangerous grounds with the new vegas situation um you know i mean i get i i, I should say for that part of california because we have technically you know we've got we've got some pieces and bits and pieces uh with the republic and everything else at the same time um i think you can do a lot of things and, and feel like well maybe it's just because we're in a new location and and write it off that way um but, I mean, I think, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Another thing that people are really focused on right now is the fact that they had a map that showed where all the vaults are at one point in time. And people doing overlays and trying to figure out where their closest vault would be and 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 if there's one near them. Uh, things like that. Uh, I guess that's that's interesting, too. It's fun to to figure out the, the real-world version of some of these things. Um, but, at any rate, I, I think if... If uh, I actually, I have somebody in my work, um, their husband doesn't know uh, about me or about anything, you know, tied to stuff. I told them to watch it um, and he had watched, you know, he had played Fallout and things back in the day. And she said that he's rewatched the whole series three times um, and not to be critical or anything like, like actually just enjoyed watching it and wants to watch it over and over again. So, I mean great uh you know that that means 
that means it's it's something that they're enjoying. Um, but yeah, I'm in, I'm interested in where it's going next. Um, I'm hoping that we continue to have cool access to things and to be able to learn about stuff and to share them as they come along. And I, I want to keep you all on that journey with me um, and, and to give you as much up-to-date things as they come out. And also, you know, the other things that our channel covers. Um, I've been doing a lot of Star Trek things that were actually meant for last year. This year, you might have seen that we filmed some clips uh, already that are related to that tricorder and stuff. We have uh, some Star Wars things that are coming up that are pretty big. Usually we do something big for May the 4th, um, and I was really planning on that being the retractable uh, lightsaber, uh, but because I'm kind of so focused on other things, I don't know that I can get the motor fixed in time to put out a good video uh, to show that off, uh, the final version. I was hoping to also take it with me to test it. That's not going to happen. Um, but, you know, at the same time, I mean, we have things that are big projects that are coming along and they're pre pretty big. Or if you're into the fan home stuff, uh, you saw I got really excited because now they're turning out models are one six scale, which means I can now stick in my giant figures into them more. Um, I also, we do have, uh, we have a few companies that, the, the, the collaborations I accept typically are things that either I'm really interested in, like I would have bought it anyways, or and, and would have shown off anyways, or it's um, ones where we're the first to get to see it. Uh, we got to do that with some of these laser cutters. We were the first ones to be able to get them and to show them off. That's fun. Uh, but uh, I've got some handheld game systems that are that we're going to be the first to review and i'm excited about that um and and i also like when people let me make fun of things or to be critical and stuff like that and that's what people are letting us do they're very open to stuff so i i like the people that we're working with lately and and being able to explore things and also diversify a little bit so that's that piece I'm also trying to do more shorts if you're into shorts. I'm also trying to do a little bit more live streams because I do like being able to interact with everybody, um, stuff like that. So at any rate, um, so if you're, if you're interested and you aren't already subscribed, subscribing to our channel really means becoming a member, a member of our community, a, a geek uh, like all the rest of us. And I really do believe in, in every single person that, that is a true geek out there that becomes a member of our community. I reach out to you. I will, I, I you know, respond to your comments and I want to, uh, to show off what you're doing too. So if you have something you're working on, you really want to show it off, contact us, uh, email us at uh, yourgeekfakes at gmail.com, you know, send us pictures, whatever else. We'll show them off at the very least in the podcast and talk about it. Um, or sometimes we might reach out to you to do some kind of collaboration or something like that. So, so yeah, keep watching. I, I appreciate everyone being out there. Um, and I know there's still more questions and things that are coming through right now as I'm making these closing comments. Uh, but at the same time, <laughs> stay tuned. The questions you have, the things that you're commenting on, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to show you a lot more in relation to those well before you'll get them in the mail. Uh, I'll, I'll be able to tell you if it's worth it. If you should keep your order in, uh, you'll be able to see it um, and, and you'll be able to. You're also going to see some other things that haven't been announced yet that I'm kind of privileged to. So very exciting. Uh, stay tuned and stay with us. And uh, as always, like, subscribe, comment below and. Uh, I, let's see here, uh, 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 can I take this off? <laughs> ah, I was going to show you something. Here we go. All right. There we are. Yeah, like, subscribe, comment below. Um, we have a lot of other things to show off. And tell me too, if there's more things that you want me to cover on this channel, or if there's something that you're interested in or into that you want to see. Um, and uh, we'll be sure to try and do that. Uh, we'll see you soon.